Hi everyone! This is Elisa from Anaya's Toolbox Crochet and I thought I'd show, come in and show you what I've been working on this week. Hi! This is what I've been working on this week. Really, she took all week. Can I show you to her? I've been trying to get her to sit down over there so you could see her right away for the past like, I don't know, 15 minutes. And this girl does not want to sit down. Let me try. Ah! As you can see. Now this is the biggest Anigurumi project that I probably have ever done. Ah! Stay, stay. Thank you. All right. This is like the biggest Anigurumi. Oh, yeah. I got her to sit and you can't see her anymore. There she is. Okay, so this is the biggest amigurumi project I have ever done. This is the mermaid, uh, Serena Emma, the mermaid. She was designed by my friend from Handmade Emman. Uh, she's been like talking about designing this doll for ever. She's been like, I'm going to design this doll, mermaid. Are you going to help me out? Help me out. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I will. Don't worry. I'm here. And she's like, okay, so she finally finished the pattern and here she is. She is beautiful and she is humongous. I have been working on her the entire week, like more than a week, in a week and a half. I literally just finished her yesterday and I got to say, she's taken on my energy. Uh, no, I have my crojo. Don't, that's not what I meant. I mean, like, I do not have the energy to spend on another amigurumi. Like an amigurumi, every, every round, more or less, is different. So you really have to pay attention to the pattern and I don't have the attention span right now after making her to pay attention to every round of everything I do. So I'm not gonna be making an amigurumi right now. Maybe in a couple of days. But anyways, this is Emma Sirena. And I love her beautiful pattern by Handmade by Iman. It has not been released. I did get permission to show her to you guys because she hasn't been released. Uh, I did get permission. I asked her, hey, do you mind if I put her in a video? Otherwise, I'd have nothing to show you if I couldn't. And Iman said, all right. So let me show you some of the details of her. I finally got her to sit and now I'm standing her up. I'm picking her up. She's got fingers. You see that? Fingers, where is it? There you go. She's got fingers. These humongous fins. Uh, a face with a chin. Uh, it was not an easy pattern to make. And it definitely was not an easy pattern to design, I'm sure. Designing even easy patterns are hard. I gotta say this because uh, I don't think I would be so tired after making her if I hadn't just designed something right before it. Both of them together has really wiped me out. I need a break from Ami Rumi, not from crochet. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I use Cascade yarn, the Peruvian one. I don't have the, I think I threw out the, the bands. No, I don't. I didn't. I still have some yarn left. Uh, I chose the colors not because these were my favorite colors because I like I do like the color don't get me wrong but I'm just saying that my color choice was entirely dependent on the size I buy one skein of yarn per color and the the skeins of yarns for fingering weight yarn which this is in 100% cotton are about 50 grams which does not give you much yarn and it's usually perfectly fine with 50 grams i can make an amigurumi perfectly the only thing i would run low on is skin tone which i have a lot of i buy more than one skein of skin tone but every other color i buy just one so this one i happen to have gone to my local yarn store and i saw it and i'm like oh it's pretty i'm gonna buy it and it was 100 grams i still have a little bit left but not much she took a lot of yarn <laughs> that's okay She's beautiful. The one thing I regret about this yarn, or this doll, and my construction of it is this. I really wish, I wanted to make three-tone hair color. I wish I did two-tone instead with the brown on the bottom and this blue on the sides. And this blue, I wish I left this blue over here. But seriously, the hair was the last thing I did. And after everything, I'm like, I regret it, but not enough to change it. So here she is. 
with the funny blue hair and all. She's done. I am going to try to figure out something about her fingers. Can I show you those? Because if you notice, look, there's wire sticking out. This is the first time I've ever used wire on, um, on fingers. I don't, like, I've made fingers before and they stay curled up like this, but, which is what happens if you don't use wire. Um, this is the first time I've used wire on hands like this. And I got to say, I don't have it yet. I don't, let me adjust the light. So maybe, maybe there. Yeah. So I don't got it. I don't have, I don't know how to do it. This was sharp. And, um, I mean, the arms were crocheted on which means that uh, when I was making details like, you know, this part right here, I was being scratched a lot <laughs> by those wires. So this is definitely a doll that was, it was always meant to be a doll that was display only. But until I could figure out the wiring situation, I can't sell a doll like this. I have to figure out what to do with this. I don't know. It's not staying in my house because seriously, I have kids can I say? I have kids. I have kids coming to my house. I I can't have something with wire exposed like this. Um, I just don't feel it safe. So I have to figure it out. Let me show you her one more time. Maybe, maybe she could sit in the background while I talk about what else I did. Like I didn't think I would do anything else. I thought this is it. This is my whole week. And it was my whole week. Um, I finished her yesterday and I thought well that's it that's all I'm making that's all I have this week but you know what yesterday when I finished making her I kind of still wanted to crochet so um I've been uh wondering about you know like um I've talked to you about my uh scraps basket oh I don't like that let me fix that okay so I've been talking to you about my scraps baskets. I've made a few of them in which I just take any scraps I am, I have without looking at color changes and how they match and how they look together and just making baskets out of my scraps. So what I do is I have one ball of yarn, uh, one skein of yarn that I keep constant. You're supposed to hold three, three strands of yarn together. I have one skein that I keep constant and the rest of it is just scraps, whatever I have. So I've had this bulky yarn for about four years and I wanted to see if I could put that in the scrap basket because I couldn't bring myself to throw out the yarn, but at the same time, I don't use bulky. And so this is it. This is the bulky right here. And so I did two strands, like the consistent strand of worsted weight and the bulky to see how it looked. And you know what? I think it looks great. And so then I got even more adventurous and took out some of my DK yarn, which is like the orange here and there's some browns here. And I said, well, let me see. Did you even see that? Like I was pointing at it and I don't know if it even showed on the camera. But this part right here is like two strands. I was holding four strands together, two strands of worsted weight and two strands of DK weight to get this part. And I, I'm like so impressed because now every, like not every, but a lot of my yarn scraps can be used up here. And I'm really happy. And I didn't really pay attention to fiber. I have all sorts of fiber in here. It's, there's acrylic, there's cotton, there's even some new, <laughs> right here, the pink right here is my Luther Yard collection, the first month I got in February. Um, yeah, I got, or March, I think it was March, I ordered it in February. Um, I put everything in there because I don't, I can't bring myself to throw out those little bits and pieces. And I was able to put it all into this ski, into this basket. Well, I have, I still have some leftovers, uh, which will become another basket eventually when I have more. Uh, I like it. And I am so glad I could use more than once a uh, one weight of yarn. I don't care about fiber, but I get to use up that little bit of yarn. You know, when you have a tiny little bit of yarn on something and you're like, I can't start a project. I can't even use it for an accent. It's it's just not working. I can't do it. And, but you don't want to throw it out? Well, I get these baskets. This is uh, the Jada in Stitches basket. You can find it on YouTube. I will link it down below. Great pattern. And I love the fact that I use up all my yarn, everything that I have. It's amazing. Um, so then after that, I still wanted to crochet. 
um, the kids were asleep. We were watching TV. And so I looked up a creative, I, I've been meaning to make one of these um, soap bags. Can you see it? Yes. Um, I can't wait till I get my living room back and I can film there again. I hope the construction is done soon. It was supposed to be done last Thursday and now they have another hiccup and they're saying another two weeks. <sighs> Anyways, back to my project. Uh, this is, uh, I love this cotton. I forget what the colorway was. Worm blush or something like that. Anyways, um, I've been wanting to make a soap bag for a long time because uh, I want to reduce my carbon footprint and getting rid of shower gels will help me do that because I will be using less plastic bottles. But I really, really hate it when the soap gets slimy towards the end and I really don't want to use the soap when it's like that so I don't use barred soap. Uh, but I saw these bags and I thought maybe I'll try to do it. So what you do is, you know, you put the soap in the bag, you could hang it up, um, put it in whatever hook, like where you put your loofahs, onto there, and you have your soap inside there, and you just take it down, you don't take the soap out, you leave the soap inside, and you use that like a loofah, and you just scrub yourself with the bag, with the soap inside it, and hopefully that will help, and I hope it works. Um, I, I plan to, you know, I would replace my shower gels like that. I had to adjust the pattern a little bit because I don't use barred soap. So she was using an ivory bar soap for her thing and it worked. But what I have, my bar of soap, I got, I order from Grove and it's like huge. It's like super thick. Look how thick this ball of bar of yarn is. A uh, bar of yarn. <laughs> this bar of soap is. It's like really big. And I, I couldn't, it, you know, like I put it on top, like I did the pattern, like she said, and I put it on top and you know what? It didn't even reach up to here of the, uh, of the soap. So I'm like, Ooh, I got to make this bigger. So I made it bigger. So I adjusted it and then I adjusted it again, uh, when it came to put the handle on, because I just didn't want to sew or weave in ends or anything like that. So what I did was I just, uh, you know, crocheted it where I thought it would be a good idea. So this is how it's going to look with the soap in it. I'm gonna hang it like that and I hope it works. <laughs> if it works, my mom's gonna be getting a gift. <laughs> I'll be making a lot more. So I made this one and I made this one because I talked about it with a friend and she was like, ooh, that sounds interesting. So I thought it'd be nice to give it to her as a gift. So I made two of these. And then I thought, okay, I just made a basket. I just made two bags for soap. I'm ready to go back into Amigurumi. Like, I've done enough, right? To distance myself. So I started this. This is a red panda pattern that is by uh, Le, La Sinon. Sinon? Sinon? Okay, I'm sorry. I do not know how to pronounce it. I don't know why I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I'm losing more of my French every day. More and more of my French every day. Uh, anyways, it's a pattern by her and I started making it. My son wanted me to make it for him in blue. He's like, I want a blue panda. Look, she's looking at it. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyways, I want a blue panda. So I said, okay, I'll make you a blue panda. So I started making this and you have to pay a lot of attention to the stitches and the rows and everything. And I was like, nope, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to go back to Amigurumi. By the way, what do you think? Can you see it? I got like this dragon locket from Wish and I absolutely love it. I mean, can I change the lighting somehow? I am in a very, very tight room. So every time I do move, I have to move a lot. Let's see. Can you see it better now? There it is. I got this locket from Wish like ages ago. I ordered it in, uh, I think in March. I ordered it in March uh, to make a stitch marker out of it. It came a couple of days ago and I already made the stitch marker here it is it's got the 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 earring hooks what's it called again lever backs um anyway so I can't wear metal jewelry my my skin tarnishes all metals including my hooks by the way like I had a furls hook the odyssey hook my skin totally tarnished it uh my needles are tarnished everything is tarnished I cannot wear and plus the metal 
jewelry after a while, it feels like my joints start aching. So I can't wear these beautiful things. Look at this necklace. I would love, love to wear it, but I can't. So I made a stitch marker. <laughs> I ordered a bunch of charms. I made a few more stitch markers, which I will show you soon, but let me finish with my whips. So after starting that, I realized I am not ready. I am not ready to do something that takes that much concentration because I love her, but she took a lot of concentration and I don't have the attention span yet to make something like an I Make a Rumi project that takes a lot of con concentration, even one that is not as complicated as she is. So I started this. Can you see it? It's a star stitch bag. I just have the base right here. And that's the sides as much as I have right now. It's a pattern by uh, Bago Day Crochet. And I'm really enjoying it. I love the star stitch. I love the look of the star stitch. Isn't it beautiful? Um, I chose this yarn because I feel like it needs kind of like a solid color to uh, stand out the star stitch and I thought about color controlling uh, especially when I got to this round where if you look because the star stitch is made over two rows so you do one row and then you come up to the top row uh, the row after that and you have the rest of it and here I have the star stitch right here half of it in one color and the rest of it in this color and I really don't like it but I'm not sure how to col color control for that because I feel like uh, the next color after this pink that I'm getting into is going to be this brown right here. So I would have to cut off everything and go to this and to finish that round. And then I come back to the pink and maybe one day I will want to do that and I'll be good with it. But for right now, when I want stuff to be just easy, I don't feel like going back and cutting this into pieces so that I could get the color stripes the way I want it to go. Um, I love this yarn, by the way. Oh, can I talk about this yarn? Okay, this is Yellow, Willow Yarns Cairo Cotton, and the color is Apple Blossom. I'll get back to Apple Blossom in a second after I tell you the specs, uh, although I have done an unboxing with this one. It's 150 grams or um, 285 meters. 311 yards and it is a number four weight yarn it is uh it is how many it's a cotton acrylic band oh here it is 60 percent cotton and 40 percent acrylic and i really like the feel of this yarn i am enjoying working with it this is the first willow brand yarn i have ever used and i'm liking it but i want to talk about this this color oh my gosh you know what Apple Blossom is the absolute best name for this yarn because as I'm using it, I'm like, when I was a teenager, my mom planted um, a pear tree, an apple tree, and a cherry tree in our backyard. The only one that survived was the cherry tree. But while we had the apple tree, we would get these beautiful, we had it like for a couple of years. We had these beautiful blooms, like the apple blossoms are beautiful. They're gorgeous. They're very much like cherry blossoms. They look very similar uh, and they smell gorgeous. I, to this day, I love the smell of apple blossoms. There are apple blossom perfumes, but they're hard to find. I have, um, Dans le Jardin in uh, Montreal used to have an apple blossom perfume that I loved. I loved, I would buy it whenever I went to Montreal, uh, which is once a year now because, you know, the kids have school. They don't have it anymore. I was so heartbroken. I finished my bottle. I do not have apple blossom perfume anymore from Dans le Jardin because they don't have it anymore in Dans le Jardin. Anyways, that was a tangent. <laughs> I love the smell of apple blossoms. But you know what? When crocheting, at least this round, Oh my gosh, it reminded me so much of the apple blossoms. I was like thinking of those like creamy, beautiful, and it had like little speckles of pink in it, the color, the, the flowers. It reminded, oh, I've always been into flowers, by the way. I, I used to do flower, a floral photography. <laughs> Anyways, I absolutely loved this. This color is called apple blossom. And seriously, it took me back. It took me back to seeing those blossoms. Every year I would like go over to the uh, f the flowers, enjoy it, sit under that tree. Not that it was a really big tree to sit under. And you know, I would take pictures of the flowers. It was 
we only had it for two short years. It was really heartbreaking. Uh, breaking, it got like diseased, so we had to chop it down. But I really loved it, and I love, I love how this, this, especially this cream one, this cream colorway, brings me back to those flowers and seeing those days. Yeah, anyways. I'm going on and on and on about something I don't care about. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Anyways, it brought me back. I love the colorway. The colorway is like absolutely perfect. Um, it's amazing. I like it. So here are the stitch markers. I actually took out all my beads and I made a few stitch markers the other day, including the dragon one I already showed you, which is actually on the project still. Because why make a stitch marker if you're not going to use it? So I put it on my project. So I made this, this stitch marker right here. Uh, I love those bees. Like I, purple has been my favorite color for a while now. And so I have a bunch of purple beads. Like purple is very easy for me to find. And I found these beautiful beads. I do not have any green. Uh, I don't have much pink, although I like pink now. I don't have too much pink. I have, look, I'm wearing this one I made <laughs> back in my bead weaving days. Um, they're all, I love it. I love this. Uh, I love the way they look. And I also got, I made two of them with that charm, which is the yarn charm. I made this one. Okay, so I'm not sure. I'm, I'm making three videos right now today of uh, yarn unboxings and this whips and foes. So I'm not sure when I'm going to post this, but I know the next video I'm going to post is from my yarn swap. And I have not posted my yarn swap uh, box yet because I haven't received all the yarn. Joanne's really gives everything in like bits and pieces. I got like two here and three here. And although I ordered everything from Joanne Fabrics, um... I haven't received all the yarn yet, but this is the um, the stitch marker I made for her. I really, really, really need to get better at my wire work because my wire work sucks. Uh, I don't know if you notice it. Let me show you closer. Can you guys see it? It's really awful. It's really awful, my yarn. See there? Right there. I need to get better at my wire work. So I apologize uh, to, her, to whoever gets it. My wire work is not perfect. Um, I have, this is actually the first time I'm working with, with wire in this way. I mean, wire in dolls, they get hidden. Uh, I've made jewelry, but it's been always beaded jewelry because I can't wear metal. So what was the point of making metal jewelry? which includes wire work. I made this one, this one. Oh, I bought some charms. I bought some charms from Wish. And I bought it, I think like in February. And I only just received it. Um, I think Wish always takes a long time, but it took even longer now, probably because of COVID. And chances are a lot of Wish's stuff comes from China. So um, I think this was probably stuck in customs for a while. But I made this one. I really, really love this one. This one I'm keeping. It's not for me. I'm not giving it to anyone. Not that I'm giving much away. I mean, these are my charms. I'm making it. I'm keeping it. Although a couple of them are going to go away. I think of the three, of the five that I made, which includes the dragon, the two yarn ones that I showed you already, and, uh, and this one, of the five, I plan to actually give away three of them. <laughs> I have people in mind to give it to. So this is the last one I made. I love this with the little cat dancing over there. I used a lobster claw. I found some really huge lobster claws in my stash. I'm like, ooh, these are good for uh, stitch markers. I hope anyways. Um, so I made this one. Again, my wire work needs work. But this is the one I made. So those are that is what I have been up to this past week. Um, I've been having fun. The the mermaid, she's beautiful. I love her. She certainly did tire me out. But the pattern has not been released yet. Uh, it's by Eman Handmade. And whenever I do, she does release the pattern, I will link the pattern down below. But for now, um, it's not. It's still in testing. I did get permission. 
I, I told you before that I feel like a designer should be the first one to display their pattern and she's already posted it on Facebook. So if you are in any Amigurumi, blog, Amigurumi Facebook page, you might have already seen her as in not my one because I haven't even taken nice pictures of her to post yet because I only finished her like yesterday. But uh, Iman has already posted her in various uh, websites so you can find pictures of her already. So I don't feel too guilty showing her off before she's finished, uh, before she's published. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like what I made. If you do, tell me what's my your favorite thing that I made. I know I make mostly amigurumi and I love making it, but I, I'm enjoying making the purse right now because the purse is really good. It's by Bago Day, uh, Bago Day from YouTube, uh, her crochet pattern. It's her star stitch purse, by the way, in case anyone is interested. Um, I'm enjoying making this. I enjoyed making that. I'd enjoyed making her. I really did. She was amazing. I'm just tired. I am not going to be working on my panda for a few days. I think by Monday. I think even before Monday. Maybe tomorrow. Um, I will be back to saying, hey, I want to make some amigurumi. Give me something challenging to make. And I will make the, the blue panda. <laughs> the blue panda. He's so cute. Um, and I have some other plan other things that I want to make. Um, I think I'm going to stick to using pa tested patterns for a little bit and I don't think I'll be designing when when I say a little bit I'm talking about a week or so I'm not talking about anything long I'll be sticking to tested patterns not testing anything and I think I won't be designing anything in the next week because I my brain needs a little bit of a break and uh, once I have my break then I might be designing again I do you know I took out I, if anyone has watched my earlier videos will know that in December I started a pattern one of my Madison my Madison is one of my base dolls uh, a Madison pattern in a princess dress and I started her in I think November and I had to put her aside for something like I got uh, someone's birthday was coming up or something and I needed to finish that project and I never picked her up since so this does this doll where I've already finished designing the dress and I still have to design the shoes and the hair um, she's almost ready all I have to do is like embroider some eyes design some shoes put a hair on it and I haven't done it she's my only whip from 2019 and I need to get on it so I took her out and I put her where I could see her and the the poor doll has been telling me all week, I'm faceless, I need hair, I need shoes. And I still haven't gotten to her. <laughs> so hopefully soon I'll be showing you, I've already shown you the doll, uh, but I'll be showing you her finished. Let's cross our fingers, all right? She really deserves to be finished. But anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed my uh, this video. If you liked the video, please like the video. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. Uh, thanks everybody. Bye.